It pushed me in many ways um, to know that um, I was being compared to Marcus. Being compared to somebody at that high of a caliber um, is something really special. It's a big blessing. You're going to want to know in the next about year or so, this is Tua Tonga Vailoa out of St. Louis High School, the same high school as Marcus Mariota. There's not a lot of guys who get the Marcus Mariota comparison. He's getting it right now. He does not run from that comparison. He's a terrific quarterback, the number five dual threat quarterback in the country right now. They really like what they see out of him in practice. Again, first time on the field, big stage here at Bam, but he's going to get his chances at the quarterback position. Just under six minutes, another first down, Alabama. Scanning the field, he had all kinds of time, and now he's running out of it. He's still going to rip it downfield. Touchdown, Alabama! Devontae Smith. Looked like Steve Young there for a second. This guy's the backup quarterback. Remember that. It wouldn't be totally absurd for both guys to have a role on the team in some kind of way, all right, which I don't hear very many people ever acknowledge that. But it, it is a possibility. It has been done in the past. I think most people would say, well, you'd like to have a quarterback, a quarterback. I would rather have two than one. I would rather have two than none. If you're a great competitor, that's why you come to a place like Alabama. College football mecca to neighboring states hungry for that beautiful trophy. A true freshman gets the second half start. We'll see how long Nick Saban sticks with it. Tungavaloa. Touchdown! And the Tide are back in it for the national championship. Hooked it! We're going to head to overtime. Fires to the end zone. Touchdown! Alabama wins! Coach, I want to ask you about your team. So obviously, some people would say having two quarterbacks, good problems to have, right? And Hurts and Tua. What do you need to see over the next few weeks to say, that's my guy, he's the starter? Well, I've said this many times, is somebody's got to win the team. Mm -hmm. uh, and both of these guys have done things in the program that create value for our team, our program, and the players in it. So, uh, but that's going to be the challenge. I am an unabashed fan of Nick Saban. So I say this with that thought in, I have that thought in your mind as I say this only Nick Saban could suggest the media is creating a quarterback controversy after he pulls his starting quarterback at halftime of the championship game yeah. that 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 is if you were to write down how does a coach create a quarterback controversy they will someday show the tape of that game and yet somehow he is going to turn this into you guys have made this into a controversy it's you want it to be I love it personally I'm here for every second of but, it. but it, it happens all the time. Like I said, do you go with who got you there? Or do who you do you go with who got you over the top? You had the Nick Foles, you had the Carson Wentz, you had Drew Bledsoe, you had Tom Brady. So quarterback controversies are rare because very rarely do you have guys get you very, very far and then someone gets you over the top for a Super Bowl or for a national championship. So that said, you do the college football for us here. I mean, I think the general, the conventional wisdom is that Tua is is, is the better off is the, is the better quarterback is, is the certainly the better passer and gives you the opportunity to have a more diverse offense. Yeah I called the Alabama spring football game at Kirk Herbstreet and Joy Galloway and just talked to the staff there and Nick Saban they said Tunga Vailoa is just more polished he has a great arm and he sees coverage as well Jalen Hurts is more of a run first guy if the first option isn't there he just takes off he does not show enough patience to go through the progressions Tunga Vailoa will be the guy and the problem then becomes Jalen Hurts is going to want to transfer. He will probably transfer and the other piece of that too is that Alabama has won primarily based on defense over the years yeah. and so do you want to put a little high risk high reward circumstance in there or do you go with the safe hurts who if he's running the ball primarily he isn't going to turn it over that much either when you let your defense win games it's a, I'll be very interested to see how that thing goes as I think Tua will win the job yeah but then if all of a sudden you know they throw some picks or whatever happens will the fans say you know something right maybe we were better <laughs> when we were just running the ball all the time coach as a former national championship winner that's dealt with quarterback battles in the past what do you think those two quarterbacks need to show Nick Saban in order to be named the starter? Well, that's just the thing. Everybody thinks it's kind of a foregone conclusion that because of what Tua did in the national championship game, that he's crowned the victor. So you do not? I do not think that. I think behind closed doors, because of what goes on in the coaching world, there's a lot of debate going on right now. You're talking about benching a guy that's being responsible for 61 touchdowns yep. personally yep. in two years. A 93% winning rate when he starts at quarterback and a guy who might, we don't know what that locker room looks like because that all comes into the debate. What does the locker room look like? Who thinks that which quarterback gives them the best chance to win? And we don't know that. I, I, we, I, we have, wait a minute, David, 
We have one sample size. Yeah. We have one half a football. Yeah. The other guy's got 30 something games. Do we have, do we have those numbers for that half? That versus Doesn't matter. Well, how numbers about the numbers for Jalen in the first <laughs> half? Numbers yeah. can lie. Okay, number, I, I agree, numbers can lie. Um, they do. And, and they, they, they do crazy. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let me ask you a question. Two people on this panel play quarterback. Could they be 26 and 2 with Alabama? With Jalen Hurts' record? Ask the dude over here who just I won a national there. championship. Well, <laughs> you pretty, close, pretty close to that record, right? Yeah, well, what I'd say, though, is that this is a different Alabama team. Okay, so that's why it might be different altogether because, yes, maybe the last two years in 16 and 17, yep. they needed a pedestrian quarterback that's not going to make mistakes because of the quality on defense. For the, not most, that way for, the most, for the most part, Alabama has done that throughout Nick Saban's whole tenure. They, they haven't had a guy. They don't need to air it out to, yeah. to smoke. They, they're more talented than everybody they play. They're going to ground and pound you. They're going to play great defense, right? This is what they've done. So I, I get what you're saying, and I, and I get numbers lie. Tua can do things that Jalen Hurts cannot do, and, and that is throw the football down the field. You recruit all these five-star guys, you don't use them with Jalen Hurts. It isn't Jalen Hurts. 26-2 and two is great, and he's a great runner. He cannot throw the ball down the field and, and make you pay. And we saw last year that hit home in the biggest way in the biggest games, the ineptitude of being able to even give a threat of passing the football. When you have a threat of being able to throw the ball downfield, your running lanes open up. It's easier on the offensive line. You convert more third downs. That's an offense that averaged almost 40 points a game in the SEC that can be better next year with Tua. Yeah. Because I'm not saying he needs to throw for 3,000 yards. But, but the he can. threat of it is there, and he absolutely can. Yeah. We've seen Jalen Hurts' ceiling. I will say this, though. I will say I've this, seen enough. And, and I know both of you guys, you're, you're on the bandwagon. I get it. <laughs> I, get it. I get it. But I'm going I'm to give you a coaching perspective, okay? Right. The reality of it is we don't have all the information. Yeah. You yeah. guys have one half of information. Agreed. The other guy has two seasons of information. Yeah. We don't know what goes on in the meeting rooms. You know how important it is. You don't know what goes on in the weight room. You don't know what practice looks like. Yeah. All of those things are, those are ingredients to figure out what this recipe is going to look like. And we don't have that information. It's going to be a fascinating debate. And it's going to be a fascinating evaluation of the two. Because to be honest with you, our sample size based on what they see 365 days a year. Yep. Maybe totally I, I don't different. disagree, Greg. But let me tell yeah. you something. I had a five-course meal in that national championship game in the second half. Because that dish was yep. tasty, brother. Yeah. That thing was really, really, really I good. You are on the Kool-Aid. Yeah. Yes. I got it. Yep. You are on the Kool-Aid with a lot of other people. Yeah. I'm just telling you, behind closed doors, the reality of those conversations are simple. This is not as easy as it looks no, because it's not. of one half. It's not, and I agree with you. Look, Tua is the, an elite thrower, and we all know that. Yep. He, he's, a, he's a lefty that can throw it down the field, that can see the field and anticipate better than Jalen has. And honestly, Jalen in the last couple of games looked a little gun-shy, looked a he little did. afraid to make a he mistake. Did. And if you play the game scared, it's going to be difficult, I think, to make the plays necessary to win the game. But the real question remains, is it fair to the runner-up in the competition to allow this competition to trickle into the regular season. Which, whoa, whoa, who are you asking? I'm asking yeah. the coach. Okay, I, I would, hey, love, yeah. I would love to know the coaching side of this. Well, I, I, you know, again, I, I, I don't have all the information. Yeah. I don't know what that looks like. Right. Let me ask you a question. He goes into the game against Louisville. I'm saying if they name two of the starter. Yeah. He throws two picks in the first half. And the game's much closer than it should be, at least the way people see it. Yeah. What's What then? What's everyone going to say then? Put Jalen yeah. in. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and vice but, versa. Same yeah. way. That's exactly right. So yeah. we don't have all the information. You're only as good as your but last But either way, play. either way, you do this, coach. Yeah. You hold both and make it a competition because we'll you don't see. want one to transfer. It's a great oh, problem. That's what yeah. you do. It's a great that's problem. Everyone said do. if you don't have two, if you have two quarterbacks, you don't have one. Well, they, I think they actually yeah, do they have two. two. And that's a wonderful problem two. to have. It will be interesting to follow the quarterback derby there in Tuscaloosa.